everybody, this is Brandon Queen with BQ Training Photo or BQ Training TV. I don't know. I don't know what's my name. BQ Photo Training TV. There we go. All right. So it's been a while since I've done a tutorial. And today we're going to talk about imposition or imposing. Okay. And as you can tell, this document is two of the same thing on one page. And then the second page is two of the same thing on a second page. But if you look closely, you have crop marks that tell you what the bleed was on the document and where the document should be cut to size. And this particular paper is 12 by 18. And the document is going to be cut down to size to eight and a half by 11 folded in half. Of course, this being the, this being the front page, this being the back page, this being the inside, the, um, and then the second page, this being the inside and then the inside to the cover. All right, so I'm going to show you how to make this. Let me close this out. And let me close that out. And we'll go back to InDesign. Okay. And we'll get rid of this. So don't say that. All right, so here's my original document. Here's my working document, if you will. Okay. Um, if you're new to InDesign, you might want to start looking at videos that uh, teach you what each part is for InDesign. But for a quick run through, this black line right here is the trim size to the document. This next red line is called your bleed. All of this is going to be cut off. Okay. And it's like that on every single document or every single page of this document. When you hit the W on your keyboard, Mac or PC, it'll make the bleed lines disappear and it'll show you a preview of how your document should look once it's printed and folded. If your document is folded. And in this instance, this one is folded. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to go look for the plugin that I'm going to use and I'm going to introduce to you all. All right. So sorry about the quick break. All right. So uh, like I said before, the red line is your bleed and it shows that everything bleeds to the edge. And what a bleed does is it makes a document look 20 times better, actually 100 times better, because usually when you print on a regular printer, it automatically puts about 0.25 or higher of a white border around your original design, even though you plan for it to bleed to the edge. It won't happen. Bleed only happens if you set it up and you send it to a professional printer to be cut down to size. Okay. So I have a script. And this particular script is by impositionsoftware.com. It's about 40 bucks and I kid you not, it is worth it. This program or this script can impose business cards, books, programs, magazines, you name it, it can do it. Now I do have a other, I have other imposition software scripts on here, but this one happens to be my favorite and I will always pay 40 bucks for it because I like it. So this is the interface. Okay. Now, my document is going to be eight and a half by 11. And you would probably think 11 by 17 will cover this document. That may be true, but you may run into a few problems. Hint, crop marks or where to cut. Or if I cut too much, I'm going to, you know, make the document shorter than what it's supposed to be. So most printers can print 18 by 12 or 12 by 18 or 13 by 19. Um, depending on what your document size is. And mine happens to be 18 by 12 inches. Um, I changed the plate margins to 0.25 for a reason. And I changed the length to the crop marks to 20 points. And you're going to see why when I export the document. Um, on the spread section, this tells you how many spreads or books you're going to put per page. So we're doing two up. If we did four up, it would not fit. If we did horizontal spine two up, it wouldn't look good. So the best one for this one is spreads book two up, perfect bound one. Now all of these have their own, you know, special settings and stuff that they do. We're going to stay away from the creep down here and the red, the color bars. You don't have to have the color bars on, but you can. So I'm going to turn mine on and I'm going to put mine to 
the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to turn off the top and I'm going to turn off the top for a reason. And then when I go over here to, you don't want to rotate anything. This, this stays off. Right here, where it says scale, you leave it at 100%. You can do work and turn or double-sided. This is a double-sided document that will be folded in half. Then we can turn on the information marks, which we will do. And then the uh, file name prefix, um, I have LPCC Souvenir Program, which is what this document is. And then over here in the actions, I can either load a template, save a template, or impose. We're going to leave it on impose. And again, this particular script is from impositionsoftware.com. Go check it out. We're going to hit OK. Now, what it's going to do is going to open up a PDF file of each page individual. But I'm going to show you something on what it's doing because it's actually going to take the PDF and upload it to the imposition template that we're making right now. So this is the individual pages, and each one is, of course, separate. It's not in spread format, and that's because it's using this PDF file to upload it as a spread format. Now, also, during this time, I highly suggest you look over each word and you check for any last-minute grammatical errors, spelling errors, any possible dates that are wrong, anything. You want to check all of that stuff right now. Because if something was to happen and you sent that file, you're going to look bad and you're going to lose a client. Or you're going to be upset. All right, so now we're going to go back to InDesign and see what happened. And as you can tell, we have our imposed document, two of the front and back on one page, and then two of the inside or the guts on one page. Now, here's the cool thing. I'm going to hit the W key. And of course, there's no crop marks or there's no bleed on this document because it's 12 by 18. But if you notice, I'm going to zoom in. You have crop marks. Okay. And those crop marks are telling the cutter or the printer where to cut and when to cut the document to size. All right. Now, earlier I told you all about the, the name of the program it is on the top of this page. I don't know why it does this favorite percent 20 design. I don't know why it does that. Uh, oops, I'll do that. And then it has the date, obviously, the date and time this document was created. <clears throat> so I'm going to zoom in again and show you how the crop marks work. All right. So I went 20% because still, printers still add a border. So if the printer happens to add a border, it's going to take away most of my crop marks. We don't want that. I can make these crop marks longer and fit to my needs. But right here is a bleed, and it's where the document is going to get cut. Right here is where the document is going to get cut. So when it's all said and done, the document will look like this when it's cut. Okay, everything's going to bleed beautifully to the edge of the paper. Okay, all right, and then we have white space here, so of course you can see it better. And then I'm going to zoom up to the top. Because I know for a fact I got some bleed on the second, first page. Right here, you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Crop is going to get cut here. Crop is going to get cut there. And also, I added the color bar, um, which may not print. It only may print half of this color bar um, to, to the page. Now, I'm going to export this file to PDF. Okay. This file is ready to go to the printers. Okay. Ready to be printed ready to be cut down and if you can impose your own document first check with your printer always 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 check with your printer to make sure you are meeting their specs okay or their specifications so this document's ready to go this is one last step the graphic designer has to do before he sends this to the printer and all the printer will have to do is print this document front and back send it off to the people to cut it and then deliver it to the client so in order to save this as a PDF, you go to File, Export, okay, and then your name is up here, all that cool stuff. It tells you where it's going to save it at. I'm going to save it on the jump drive specified for this project, 
and I'm going to hit save. Now, up here, I can do high quality print, or I can do press quality. I'm going to do press quality. I want to view my PDF after it exports, and I want to do it as a page, not a spread. You want to make sure your compressions are good to go. You can maneuver some stuff here. I don't recommend it. If you do, um, if you go up by two, this is going to be four, but then here you have to go up by four just to make sure it's, you know, an even number. But I'm going to leave that. You know, you don't need your marks and bleeds. If you wanted to, you can just use the document bleed settings, which there is none. And then everything else should fall into place and be fine. Okay. And I'm going to export. All right. Now, Adobe PDF or Adobe Acrobat has successfully exported my document. All right. So when this goes to the printer to be printed, it will be printed and it will be ready to go. Now, if I was to do this as a plate, like, for example, if I was going to run this on like a, a press, an actual press where they have to put the ink on the paper, I would actually send this file in. I think I have, what, three or four colors on here. I would literally send this file in four different PDF templates or whatever the document file name or file extension they need. So this is my document. As you can tell, my crop marks are there. Okay. My document title was there and the date it was created. And then my crop marks are at the bottom. And then if I really, really wanted to, I could actually take this space here and I can move this crop mark to where it butts up to the bottom of this um, document here. But the reason I'm not going to do that is because I don't want to risk bleed coming into the bottom document. So leave the gap. It serves its purpose. That's why you print on 12 by 18 for a document that's 8 and a half by 11 that will be folded in half or left as is. So that is how you impose a four page booklet or two page folded in half program with imposition software. If you have any questions, you can email me at Brandon at BrandonQueenPhotography.com and I'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you guys for your time and you all have a blessed day.